So after verifying my analytics code with Google Analytics, this is this is the result. I'm going to back up again. I'm going to show here on on a client. So the way it works is um, once it's set up, we're going to have these columns, sessions, average session duration, bounce rate, goal conversion. It's going to be better uh, for me to actually dive deep into the data right away. So I'll show it like this. Even if you don't have it fully set up, you can still go to these different screens here. So just uh, you can back up to you can back up to home and then click on any one of these all website data. You can still click there to see what we're going to see. So you have all of these different views of data. So dashboards, etc., etc. Uh, for example, under real time overview, this can tell me if there's any traffic to the data right. I mean, to the website right now. It even tells me are they on desktop or mobile. You know, within the last half hour, how many hits and how many clicks to a specific page. So when you guys were going to the website recently, it was tracking it. This is under real time. We have audience acquisition behavior and conversions. You might not have conversions. I'll tell you how to activate conversions in a little bit. We've got audience acquisition behavior. Those are the ones you usually are going to look at most often, and each one of these has an overview. So when you first get to the screen, which is the reporting screen, home screen, reporting screen, when you click on one of these websites, I mean one of these links of your website, it takes you first to audience overview. So let me show then what this screen is all about here. You get this chart and this data, sessions. You can hover your mouse over these and it gives you info. Total number of sessions. A session is the period of time a user is actively engaged on your site. So they are use, these are sort of like hits. It's a different way to count hits. And so 8,800 hits. And yeah, that number is different than Google Search Console because here it counts them differently. It counts that people are actually clicking on different parts of your site. <coughs> Users, these are the actual visitors to your site, and it counts new and returning users. <coughs> so 7,000 and a half different users. Page views, uh, the total number of pages viewed and repeated views do count. So yes, if I go to my home page and I click refresh seven times, I just gave myself seven page views which obviously doesn't matter. Why would you do that to yourself? So it does count it as repeats, but that's nearly 16,000 here. We've got pages per session. Someone visits your site, and they may look at different pages while they're on your site. So it's going to tell you all these numbers, but for some of them, I cannot tell you what's good or what's bad. It's going to depend on your site. For example, page session an average session duration, this is one and a half minutes. For some sites, this is terrible, and for some sites, this is good, and for some sites, this is great. And the reason that I can't give you, I can't pin down an answer for you is, think about it like this. This is a restaurant. When you visit a restaurant, what's the number one thing that you want to accomplish on the restaurant's website? Maybe get the location, get the phone number, get the menu. You have a goal of what you want to do on the website. And so this is saying, for this client, people visit approximately two different pages on the site. Maybe the home page and maybe the order page. Or maybe they go directly to the order page and check out. So for this particular client, two views of pages might not be so bad. They're looking at what they want. They're looking at the phone number and then they leave. Or they go directly to the shopping cart because they bookmarked it, they buy and then they leave. So that's not so bad here perhaps. Think about it in, in the terms of let's say you're a blogger. You're someone that's writing on your blog and you want to make money off your blog. You want people to read your stories, your articles. 
this is showing that people are barely looking at two different pages on my site, and I'm a blogger. For that case, that's terrible. They're not reading enough. They're not, they're not looking at enough things on my site. So two scenarios why this number is good or bad. It depends on the, on the site. Look at that one too. If I'm this restaurant, one and a half minutes might be enough time for me to add to cart, put credit card, check out. Especially if I have that auto-saved. Especially if I have that bookmarked. One and a half minutes might be terrible for that author. That means they're barely even reading one article, one blog post. So depending on what your website's all about, that number's good or bad you will be able to tell if it's good or bad. Same thing also with bounce rate. Bounce rate basically means someone visits a page, any page on your site, and then leaves without doing, without going to any other page. They came to this page and they bounced, they left. Again, is this a good or bad number? It depends. Some uh, SEO tutorials and such are going to say, make sure you've got you've got no more than a higher 30% bounce rate. Well, that might work well for some types of businesses, and it might not be relevant for others. Again, what if on this client, this business that sells products, they have directly the bookmark to the checkout page or the buy page. They buy it, they check out, they leave. That could have a higher bounce rate. What if they visit the home page, they see the phone number, and that's all they need, and then they leave? Was that a failure that they left after one page? Maybe not. What about if they're that author? They came to read one of your articles, and then they left. That might be okay, but I would rather have them read five of them. So maybe that might be too high for that author. And then the last one here, sessions, new sessions. This is the percentage, and we'll see all of the exact values, but this is the percentage within this time period of new sessions. Google noticed that 81% of people visiting this site were new. They hadn't seen them before. Yes? Do they determine that they're new because you've got a new IP address, or are they using cookies? It's a, it's a combination there. It's the cookies in the IP address, but the IP address is not the best indicator because it changes. I might have an IP address that, you know, AT&T gave me, but they change those once in a while. So AT&T gave me a new IP address. It's not as reliable. It is more about the cookies and your particular profile that it knows about you. you if you clear them, then it looks like you're a new then you're a new visitor, yes. If you're in incognito mode, it doesn't know about you. If you're in private mode, it doesn't know about you, so it keeps counting you as a new session. So if that number is good and bad, it depends on your business. Can you build your business on repeat customers, or can you build your business on new customers? That's an answer you have to give. I'm in the section of audience. Who are the people visiting me? And I'm seeing within the last time period, at the top right, the last time period is one month. I can set this, show me more data. Show me, just to really stretch it out, show me one year of data. Again, the longer you have this set up, the more data you have. One year of data looks like this. 112 thousand sessions, 89,000 users, 200,000 page views, etc. In this longer period of time, I'm seeing it here, perhaps in a more accurate terms for this client. And are these wrong or right values? For this client, they're just fine. The client has been doing really well. They are selling more and more. Uh, they're getting new people all the time learning about the restaurant and, and visiting. The rest of this information about the audience is so detailed and so so interesting. Demographic system mobile. Language. The number one language that people have set up on their computer or mobile phone 
is English, six and a half thousand. Second is ES, Espanol. Then we've got Spanish American version, Spanish, wherever that's at, general Spanish, Russian, Spanish from Spain, Spanish from Mexico, Russian from Russia, English from Great Britain. So these are the different languages. The, the huge majority are English speakers. Even though it's a Mexican food restaurant, the majority is English. Even if I add up all the Spanish variations, that doesn't come up to the same amount. Is that good or bad? Yes? 419. 419. Um, what's that? ES 419. I don't think it's an area code. I think it's uh, from the Caribbean. Spanish Latin America. Yeah. It says Latin America. Mm -hmm. So just more more Spanish, Latin America. Spanish appropriate for the Latin American and Caribbean region. Um, so these values are they good or bad? It depends on your on your client. I have to I have to say, however, unfortunately, I have to do a sweeping generalization. If, you, if you're getting a lot of Russian traffic, unfortunately, I'm yeah. probably telling you that's spam. There's a lot of spam coming from China and Russia, um, sometimes India, but um, this tells you everything. So I'm getting some traffic from Russia, but it's not overwhelming. You can then go into countries. So the number one traffic is from the U.S., second is Mexico, third is Russia. There's, there's probably those Russian spammers in Canada, Brazil, Australia. Again, I already mentioned Australia. They have a, you might think, well, that's spam. Who's going to care about this Mexican food restaurant from the other side of the world? Well, lamb is a big thing in Australia, and this is a lamb barbecue-focused restaurant. The reason, the way you can use this data again is, well, if I'm getting this amount of traffic, let's say it is legitimate traffic from Russia, then I might want to start to create content in Russian or reaching a Russian audience. I might have a page, I might have an icon on the home page that says, you know, welcome Russian friends in Russian, and then they click on it and then they go see the stuff specifically for that audience. I would not have known that if I didn't set this up. City. This uh, restaurant started in Tijuana, and then they came to San Diego, Chula Vista. Then they opened uh, a, year, a little more than a year ago. They opened a new location in Los Angeles, and their plans next stop is Las Vegas. So the Los Angeles traffic has already eclipsed the San Diego traffic. It's double. And so here, again. Once I know this, I can create content. Maybe I go on social media. Maybe I go on Twitter, and I create a Twitter, Twitter ad campaign and target it to Los Angeles, because I'm seeing more traffic is in LA, so I set up a Twitter campaign to target Los Angeles patrons to visit the Los Angeles, uh, the Los Angeles shop up there. Sometimes you're going to see, for example, not set, and that's when people are visiting a site in, in private mode. Depending on your browser, you have the option, uh, Chrome here calls it incognito window. If I do there, this is, just, this is going to help you browse websites more in secret. If you're over on, on Firefox, they've got it also. They call it private window, so, so it's not giving the... It's not giving the information away uh, like it normally does. You can see your browser. So the number one web browser that people visit the site on is Google Chrome. Second is Safari. Third is Safari in-app. Whenever anything says in-app, it's usually that you're in some kind of app and it opens a web browser. And this one is usually the, the Facebook, the Facebook app, the, the iPhone Facebook app, because Safari is on the iPhone. 
and this is opening the web browser in the app. Fourth place is Internet Explorer, on and on, and then we've got Edge, Microsoft Edge. So that's showing that people are visiting, starting to visit with Windows 10. Again, I could set something up, and this is more advanced, but I can program my website to detect when someone visits with Edge. And if they detect, if my website detects an Edge user, then a pop-up could appear that says, Welcome, Microsoft Edge user. Today's your lucky day. 10% off, no, 50% off in the next half hour to hopefully entice them to buy. I don't know what YA browser is. It might be Yahoo browser. And Amazon Silk is for like their Kindles. Oh, I... No, Chrome is... Uh, Chrome can be on the desktop, laptop, or Android phones, or iPhones. I would think Internet Explorer would probably on the cell phones in it, yeah I have a Microsoft phone and it does have Internet Explorer uh, but it is a smaller demographic uh, so this varies for this particular client Chrome is number one but this is not the demographics of the whole world for the whole world it's still Internet Explorer that is the, the, the big one usually. So this is just data. What you do with the data is up to you. So here's an example. I remember reading an article a few years ago, uh, some travel website or you know, some, some travel agency website or something was, was discovered that if you visited their website in Safari, the prices were a little higher. Now who often uses Safari web browser? Mac users, people on an Apple device. And Apple devices often are a little pricier. So this company thought, well, if they can afford to be on a Mac, they can afford to have higher prices. <laughs> they, that was discovered. They were called out about it. And they said, oh, there, that was an error in our programming. We'll fix it. <laughs> sure. That's the bad way to use this. The good way, again, like I'm saying, if your website can detect it, and you can do something about it, like offering a coupon or a sale or some special content, for those users. How you do it is out of the scope of this class, but that is called browser sniffing. Let me just make a note of that. Uh, track lots of data about a new site. See which browsers visited your site. I'll oh, see, see which I'll say, see, see which demographics. See which demographics visited your site, and then act accordingly. Use browser sniffing to find out which browser's visit. So all of this data, on the one hand, sounds great. I can, I can know so much about my users. On the other hand, this sounds terrible. I can know so much about my users. Google and Bing and Yahoo and all of them know so much about us. Uh, the web browsers and the search engines, your web browser is broadcasting so much information about you without you even knowing it. That's why these browsers are adding these private browsing options to help mitigate that. That's why now they're starting to feature these, the, uh, starting to activate this feature called Do Not Track. That's still up to the website to honor that, however. Like in the real world, put me on the Do Not Call list. But some spammers are still going to forget about that and still call you. So unless that's enforced, it doesn't have much any teeth. What else? Operating system. So the most trafficked barely is iOS. So people on their iPhones and iPads, 2.9. 
Android 2.8, very, very close. And then third, Windows, pretty close as well, 2.1. And then Mac itself, dropping down Chrome OS, Windows Phone. So us that have Windows Phone, no one likes us. Uh, and so sixth place. Linux, six people on the BlackBerry visited the website. So that's definitely a cause to program the website to say, welcome BlackBerry users, here's a 50% coupon, we know you're hurting, so buy something. And a couple of vi people visited on their PlayStation in the middle of playing games. Yes? Chrome OS, that would be like if you're using a Chromebook? Exactly. Where you don't have another operating system? Exactly, that, that's exactly it. The Chromebooks use Chrome OS. How do they your web browser is giving away all of this information. It's called the user agent. You can do here. What's my user agent? There's a website called What's My User Agent. And it, this is all the data I'm giving out every time I visit a website. It sees that I'm using Chrome on Windows. So try that on your favorite browser. There's my IP address. I'm giving away my web address and JavaScript is on, and my monitor size, this is just automatically just given away. For us as a business, as an online presence, that's good, because then we can perhaps custom tailor our experience for the user. But from the opposite side via privacy, this could be an invasion of privacy. So. Privacy and cybersecurity is a big topic nowadays, and we have options. Service provider. You're also telling what provider you're with. Now, it seems that a lot have been set to not set, but um, if we look at the chart, Time Warner Cable is the most popular, then T-Mobile, then Cox, Sprint, etc. Uninet. This is uh, this is from Tijuana. Service provider corporation sounds fake, but apparently people have that one. Uh, What's that? Huh. Okay. Well, Cox Communications, Cox Communications Inc. It may be that they've got uh, a certain name in LA and a certain name in San Diego. Operating system. So again, the most popular is iPhone, the second is Android, very close. Windows Phone. Oh, look at that. Windows Phone places higher than regular Windows. Blackberry, PlayStation, on mobile. Oh, I see, yeah, uh, Windows, of course, yeah, Windows Phone higher than Windows because we're in the mobile section. Well, there's a lot more Androids than there are. Yeah, Apple, demographics wise, there's. So, well, I, I wonder, is the, is the demographics of people looking for Mexican restaurants, do they tend to have more, more iPhones? iPhones? I wonder. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. And this is going to vary for everyone. So once it's set up on your site and you let it track the data, you'll see, oh, actually on my site, I'm much more popular with BlackBerry users. Service provider again. So T-Mobile is the highest one. Screen resolution. This is an interesting screen to look at, screen resolution, because it's often a challenge to design your website because there's so many different sizes of screens. Uh, and if you did classic web design, there was the 640 by 480 pixels that you needed to design for. And then the monitors got bigger and bigger and the more pixels and all of that. And now then mobile is starting to be very popular. And these have a different sort of dimensions and proportions and such. And these are getting better and better. And you're having like a little HD quality screen in your pocket. So you, you, it's difficult to figure out how should I design my site, where should I put the things on my site, because is it going to get cropped, is it going to get squashed? Well, it's sort of a chicken or the egg. Do I design my site a certain way, or do I check the results after it's designed? But if you look here, the most popular dimension is 360 by 640. Now, any... 
maximum screen resolution here. Any dimensions of, of more than 720 pixels is, is considered HD, HD quality. Anything lower than that is not HD. The number one result for this client is not HD. Neither is second, third, it's up until fourth place that an HD quality phone or screen appears. So 1.8 plus 1.2, that's 3, 3.7 approximately, 3,700 approximately hits are coming from non-HD quality phones. Not the top of the line Galaxy S6, not the quality top quality iPhone 6. So most people that are coming to this site have relatively lower size screens. So that means that's telling me I should make my dimensions for my mobile site something like this. Not a lot of screen space to show your content. This one down here, this is a really good high quality HD quality phone. Tenth place. In the last month, only 76 visitors. Why? I don't know, but that's the results. And what you do with the re those results is create a website with this data. I'm not saying write this down and make your website like this. This is what's, what the answer is for this client. For your own particular site, it's probably going to be different. <clears throat> All of this that we've looked at is the tip of the iceberg in the audience overview section. I'm going to take one more break. We'll look at a couple more sections. We're not going to look at every single thing. We'll look at a few more sections that I think are valuable. And we'll, uh, then we'll go on. So it's 8.20. We'll take a break until 8.30. And then we'll go on.